Hi, this is Professor Angela Rasmussen from the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at the University of Utah. Today I'm going to go over an example for Thevenin equivalent circuits. Some of you, this was your quiz. Um, so I wanted to start with this um, circuit and you want to find the Thevenin equivalent between terminals A and B here. So when I do that, the first thing I usually start with VTH. So to find the Thevenin, the Thevenin means you need to find VTH and RTH. So I usually start with VTH, and that's going to be between A and B, which is going to be the voltage here already marked as V0. So we want to find that voltage here at VTH. And so I'm going to write um, an equation for this unknown. And I notice that there's only one branch here, so all this current flows here. So this is going to be 2V2, and it's going to be oriented from plus to minus. So V0, you can see here, is going to be plus 3 plus 2 V2. So VTH, which is V0, is plus 3 plus this 2 V2. Now we see from this equation that V2 is the unknown variable. So I notice that it's located here in the circuit, and it's a differential meaning that it is the voltage here at the plus side minus the voltage here at the negative. This is the most common error I see with students is they forget to take this as a differential. So I need to find the voltage at this node and I'm gonna label it V2A. And then I need to find the voltage at this and then take a difference between them. So the voltage already here we know is VTH, which is this equation. So my V2 equation is going to be V2A minus VTH. So this is a dangling resistor, meaning that there's no current flow through there. Therefore, the voltage here is also going to be the same as the voltage at V2A. So without any current flowing through this branch, I'm going to have current flow from that current source of 4V1, and it's gonna flow through both the 100 ohms and the 15 ohms. And so the voltage at V2A is going to be a negative 4V1 times 100. And now I can substitute these in to V2A here and VTH here. And so V2 is going to be minus 400 V1, minus 3, minus 2 V2. So now I notice that I have a V2 variable on this side and a V2 variable on that side. So I need to bring these over to the same side. So that's going to be a V2 and then a plus 2 V2 is a minus 400 V1 minus 3. And then combining this, this is 3 V2 minus 400 V1 minus 3. And now I can divide all of this quantity by 3. Oh, I just noticed I did make an error. So this was the current, and this is the resistor. So this is times 100. So this is 200. And this should be 200. So 201 V2 and divided by 201. So now from here, I see that I have an unknown variable of V1. So I'm going to go and locate V1 in this circuit. I notice V1 is located here. And so I'm going to label this to solve for this a VX node here. And I notice then I can write this current in terms of VX and this term in terms of VX. And then I can solve for V1. So to write those current equations, this current is going to be VX minus 2 over 30. This current here is Vx minus 1 over 10. And then the current in this branch 
is going to be a minus, minus 4v1 equals 0. So I need to get all of these terms in to be the same. So I have a vx, vx, but I have a v1. So I want to write v1 in terms of vx, and then I will have one equation with one unknown and can solve that. So v1, I notice, is the current goes in this direction from plus to minus, but this goes plus to minus. So they're opposite signs. So v1 is going to be a minus vx minus 2 over 30 times 20. And I can plug that in to the v1, and I get vx minus 2 over 30 plus vx minus 1 over 10. And then a 4 times 20 is a minus 80 over 30 vx. And then a minus and a minus becomes a plus multiplied by a minus becomes Sorry, this was a plus, because a minus and a minus becomes a plus. The minus minus becomes a plus, but then the minus from the 2. So that becomes 80 times 2, so 160 over 30 equals 0. And then I'm going to combine all the Vx terms, find a common denominator. So this becomes 3 over 30. And then I take the other variables, like the 2 over 30, to the other side. Again, 1 over 10 is 3 over 30. And combine all of those to be 165 over 30 on this side. And then this becomes 84 over 30. So I divide by this. That becomes 30 over 84. And the 30s cancel, and I get a value for Vx of 165 over 84. And that is um, approximately 1.96. So now that I have Vx, I can go back and plug Vx into the other equations. So that goes back into V1 first. So I can get a value for V1. So minus 20 over 30 times 1.96 minus 2. And this gives me a value for V1. Of a 0 0.024. And now from the V1, I can substitute that back into the V2 equation. And get minus 400 times 0.024 minus 3 over 201. And this gives me a value of a minus 0 0.06. And then I can go back and substitute the 2 volts back into my original VTH. So VTH is 3 plus 200 V2 of the minus 0 0.06 to give me a value of minus 9.5. So this is my value for VTH is minus 9.5. Now I want to solve for RTH. In order to solve for RTH, We need to modify the circuit, so we're going to remove the independent sources, which removes all three of those. Removing them means that they become a short, so those all become a short. And then I'm going to apply an external source. And I like to do a voltage source for these circuits because once I put a voltage on here, I know the current going through this branch because that's just going to be the voltage divided by resistance. So the steps here was to remove all the independent sources. Add the external source. 
and then solve for the unknown of whatever. So if you put a voltage on, you're going to solve for the current. If you put a current, you're gonna solve for the voltage across that. So in this case, our unknown is I test. Once we get that value, this value we've applied, we're gonna be V test. And that's going to be one volt in this case divided by I test. So we need to solve for this I test. So in order to do that, we're going to write an equation for our unknown in this case, which is I test. So doing a current summation here, we have three branches out of that node. So I test, one over 100 will be this current. And then we have the fixed current source of 2V2. So now V2 is our unknown. Again, V2 is the same thing where we have to find the voltage at the top minus the voltage at the negative side. So the plus side minus the minus. So V2 is again V2A minus V0. And in this case, our V0 we set as one volt. So this node here is set as the source of one volt. So Again, the current is zero in this branch because it's dangling. And we have 4V1 going through that resistor of 100. So that's 4V1 times 100, the current times the voltage, minus 1. And now V1 is located here. I can call that node again Vx. So Vx over 30, Vx over 10 minus 4V1 equals zero. And again, V1 is the opposite current. So minus Vx over 30 times 20. I plug that into here and I get Vx over 30 plus Vx over 10. Minus times a minus becomes a plus. So 80 over 30 Vx equals zero. And when I combine all these terms together, they're all equal to zero. The only way this is a true statement is that I divide this whole quantity, I multiply that by zero, that still gives me Vx is zero. So if Vx is zero, that means that V1 is zero. And so this quantity here is zero, so therefore V2 is going to be a minus one volt. And I test, I can take I test over to the other side and I get one over 100 minus times a minus becomes plus two. And now RTH is one over this value. And I notice here that I can write the two as one over one over two. Something to note here for this specific configuration where we have a dependent source up here and then a resistor and then an open. This is going to be a common configuration that we see. And so what I notice here with this result is that this is really a 100 ohms in parallel with one over two. And that's the same answer. This value will be approximately 0.5 ohms. And so what I notice about that too is that that is the value of the dependent current source. And this is going to be an important finding and we'll use this configuration again in the future. So I did want to note that. And then the answer is a 0.5 ohms for RTH. So VTH we found as a minus 9.5 volts and RTH as 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 ohms. And the circuit configuration for this is A to B connections and a minus 9.5 and 0 0.5 ohms. And this concludes.